You get to make use of some cards that are situationally very powerful. You get to use uh, is it searing, I don't want to get it wrong, searing blood, which, which is the, the new searing flesh. Right. And like it, that card, when you when creatures are presented that can it can target, the card's real good. All right. So we join these players in the middle of game three. Currently on the board, we have a Brave the Elements being cast on Brandon Wallace's side of the board. Uh, he has a, both Burmaz and Fleece main line, so quite the team assembled here. Yeah, and it does look like Brandon has a, a strong board position. And uh, actually, uh, I think we've got a stack. We've got. <laughs> yeah, okay. okay. So this, it looks like uh, Colin attempted a Searing Blood. Uh, Brandon responded with Brave the Elements to give his creature protection from red. And Colin is now playing Skullcrack. Yes. The uh, Yeah, and Skullcrack. Does stop prevention? Is that also true? It, okay, Skull, so Skullcrack says the damage can't be prevented, which uh, protection does prevent damage. However, but, however, uh, protection also keeps uh, a creature from being targeted by whatever is, yes. he has protection so, from. So Colin's going to be blown out a little bit here. If, if this Searing Blood were, say, a Pyroclasm effect, then yes. this play would work. It but, would. But because... So all of that's going on is legal here, but it's not going to work out the way that Colin wants it to work. And I'm, I'm actually not completely sure on the wording on Searing Blood. I don't know if... I'm pretty sure that he will not get the three damage. Yeah, it's if the creature dies this no. turn, which is not going to die. So the Searing Blood is going to... It's going to be countered on resolution. Um, and then by Brave... Yeah, Brave the, basically, Seer, Skullcrack will happen. Then Brandon Wallace's creatures will get pro-white. Then the Searing Blood will be countered on resolution. And then some damage will happen. Yeah, then take three, Skullcrack you. Uh, Searing Blood trading for Brave the Elements is not, you know, the best use of a Searing Blood. But yeah, as we, again, uh, it's one of the better cards in, in the matchup for Colin, Searing Blood. And actually, Brave the Elements, one of the better cards in the matchup for Brandon. So we're just trading card for card, and then we're also Skullcracking. Yeah, so we're just Lava Spiking him with a Skullcrack, which mm -hmm. in this matchup isn't terrible. I mean, I'm assuming that... Wallace has access to unflinching courages out of the board. He has so, three. Yes. So there's a chance that by using this skull crack that Colin has opened himself up to some, you know, some pretty bad outs. But I, I, it's probably fine. And it looks like we see a Boros Charm also in Wallace's hand. Yeah. And I, I'm not actually sure where we are in the turn or whose turn we're even on either. So yeah, we're on Wallace's attack. Okay. And so this Boros Charm actually paired up with seven damage he has attacking. Looks like it should be lethal. It does look that way. He's not scooping him up, so. I don't know what the mode chosen on Boros Charm was. Did he Boros Charm to make his creatures indestructible, perhaps? Okay. Okay. Oh, well, I don't know how that judge call was resolved. He didn't need to do that. Yeah, I don't think. he didn't need to. It's possible that one of the the weird interactions here. Judges are put in a spot frequently where they they they, they, they have to avoid giving strategic advice. Yes, they cannot coach. So yeah. you just have to ask questions, which they will honestly answer. But if you ask the wrong questions, you may misunderstand yeah, the situation. Yeah, it's possible that Brandon just asked the wrong question. He he asked, does Skullcrack keep? Would Skullcrack mean that damage? isn't prevented by protection. And the judge has to just say, yes. yes. That's how that works. Oh, well, better get my guys indestructible. As it is, it looks like the things should be decently OK for Wallace. Right now, he's up 9 to 8. Um, yeah, he's still Chandra's Phoenix cast by Colin Chilbert. Still has a very good board position. Um, left total, not, not the best place. You know, 9 is uh, better than 0, but not that much better against uh, a deck full of burn like Collins. Yeah, well, you know when your opponent is casting Chandra's Phoenix to, and not attacking with it, that you're in a pretty good spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has to... Uh, if he has a way to attack through that Chandra's Phoenix, obviously he would like to do that. But assuming that the Chandra's Phoenix gets to block, uh, that's going to buy Colin one turn, which may be all he needs, actually. Colin could have another burn spell, say a Skullcrack or, or a Lightning Strike at end step, untap, cast two more burn spells, and that would be it. Um, yep. We actually don't know how many cards yeah. are in Colin's hand. It might just be the one. In yeah, which so case... If it's a Boros Charm, he could, you know, chump, charm, put Brandon to five, buy back Phoenix, and if he top decks a three-point burn spell, he's good. Yes. Okay, so, and actually, would Lightning Strike do it too? Yeah, if he has a three damage burn spell, then that rebuys the Phoenix, and then he is live to draw Boros Charm. However, if you look at the card that Brandon has shuffled to the front of his hand, it is an unflinching courage, which is going to make this... I don't even know if Colin can live through the turn, much less if he can deal with the Unflinching yeah, Courage. Likely not. He, he actually it looks like he is choosing between Boros Charm and Unflinching Courage. Well, if you put Courage on the on the Bramaz, I don't believe Red White Burn has a way to deal four at two mana to um, a creature. Right. So you would you could block. Uh, you you basically take the five from Bramaz, and then take two more from the token, 
from, from, from the two tokens. Uh, and then you would block the Fleecebane Lion with Chandra's Phoenix. And if the last card in your hand is Skullcrack, then you prevent the life gain. And, and you, you go to, to one, top deck Boros and you have to uh, top deck Boros Charm. So yeah, that, that, an would, out. that would be how Colin can win this game if Brandon plays on Flinching Courage. And we, again, we don't even know and if he has And that's also an if Colin's, in that situation, Colin's last card has to be Skullcrack. Yes. Yeah, well, I, I think it, it kind of had to be Skullcrack yeah, already, so. All right, and there we see that's the play, Unflinching Courage on Bramaz. All right, so to survive, Colin has to make the right block. That last card has to be Skullcrack, and that card on top of his deck has to be Boros Charm. So you're saying Easy there's game. a chance. There's yeah. a chance. It's not, <laughs> it's not a good one. Yeah. And Brandon has, has basically made the commitment uh, he's play, by playing the Unflinching Courage. So not much left for him to do but shove. And it looks like that's what he is going to do. Everybody attacks. Another cat joins the party. So that is, as we're going, as we said before, it's five trample damage from Bramaz. It's two from the, the cat tokens. It's three from Fleecemane. The only way Colin makes the correct block. So that's going to be five, six, seven. Show me, show me Skullcrack. It's got to be Skullcrack. They go to the life pad. It is not a Skullcrack. Yeah, that won't do. Now, there may be some combination of cards that I am overlooging, but I think that, oh, his, that Skullcrack to, was his only Yeah, he's up to 14 now. That's, that's way too big of a number. It was Lightning, lightning strike. strike. Yeah. So he Lightning Strikes. Brandon puts him to 11, buys back the Phoenix. Uh, he could draw Chain of the Rocks, assuming it's in his deck. Uh, and he drew another Lightning Strike for the turn. So even in that other situation, he was one damage short. Yes. Uh, again, yeah, I think it, it needed to be either Boros Storm in hand, or yeah. if, he, if the heart card in hand dealt three damage, it needed to be Boros Storm on top. And Colin, with a flare, throws the lightning strike at the face, puts Brandon to six, and then offers the hand. Brandon Wallace moving to eight. No, Colin Schilbert picking up his first loss of the day. He'll drop to seven and one, but still in contention for top eight. Yeah, Brandon Wallace moving to eight-oh with some fancy headgear. I, I'm not sure what's going on there. It's a plant something.